Hi boys and girls, it's seed time again and we are here from C at Trinidad Tobago to encourage your hearts and to pray with you today. Father, I thank you for our program this evening. I thank you, God, for everything that you're going to continue doing. I pray, Lord, that you continue to bless the children, that you will keep them, and that you will cover them, that your will will be done in all of their lives. As they look at our program today, Lord, I pray that you'll be, they would be strengthened and they would be encouraged, O oh God, that the parents as well would be encouraged, O oh God. I pray, o Lord, that you continue to bless each and every one of them and every person that will be on today, O oh God. Father, I pray, Lord, that you continue to bless us all. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Amen and Amen. Our theme for this time is Fear Not, and it comes from Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, for I will help thee. So I pray that God will continue to help you and strengthen you and keep you as you continue to listen to our program. All right. Coming to do our memory verse for us is Rihanna Ramchatan. So good day, boys and girls. So today I have a question for you all. How many of you all here are humans? Okay, very good. We are all humans, okay? And as humans, you are going to struggle with, be with being afraid, right? So many of you all may be afraid of the dark, may be afraid of being alone, clowns, bugs, or you may even have the fear of something happening to someone that you love. Okay, so when I was younger, I was really afraid of cats. And every time I saw a cat, I would run and scream. But then I remembered a scripture from the Bible. And it tells us not to be afraid. Okay, so this scripture is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 okay and today here i have my bible and i will be turning to the book of isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 and this book is found in the old testament okay so i will be reading the verse for you today and it says for i the lord thy god will hold thy right hand saying unto thee fear not i will help thee okay so i read it again isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 for i the lord thy god will hold thy right hand saying unto thee fear not i will help thee okay so it says for i the lord thy god so this is Jesus talking here, will hold thy right hand. So Jesus will hold your hand, saying unto thee, and he will tell you, fear not, I will help thee. He will tell you, do not be afraid, and he will help you. Okay, so Jesus will hold your hand, and he will tell you to do not be afraid, that he will help you. Okay, so some of you all today are going to write SEA and this scripture verse could really be helpful as when you go to when you sit in the exam room you can read the scripture, you can remember the scripture because it says the Lord will hold your hand and he will help you, right? So you do not need to be scared, you just need to remember this memory verse, right? And for those of you who have not yet accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, I want you to, to trust the Lord and to have faith in the Lord that He will hold your hand and that He will help you. But first, you need to give your life to Jesus and, and He will do this. And for those of you that already accepted the lord as your savior just continue to believe that jesus will help you and that you do not need to be afraid okay so i will be reading the scripture one more time and then i will ask the boys to repeat the scripture after me so isaiah 
chapter 41 verse 13 for I the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand saying unto thee fear not I will help thee so can I hear the boys please okay very good so now let's hear the girls and you will say this after me Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 for I the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand saying unto thee fear not I will help thee okay very good girls so now I will want hmm. let us all say it together Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 for I the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand saying unto thee fear not I will help thee okay very good so I just want you guys to know that remember the scripture verse and that you do not need to be afraid because being afraid is a normal part of life but you need to remember this scripture verse and that Jesus will be there with you okay thank you thank you Rihanna that was well done I pray that the children will be blessed now it's the important part of our program and we would like you to introduce to you Pastor Roland Kentish, who will bring the word that will strengthen your heart. No need to give in to fear. The fearful events of the last two years due to COVID that is still going on and adding to the already existing levels of fear due to crime is evidence that this life is marked by fear. As children you've been shut in and you've been shut away from your classmates, from extended family members, from friends, from activities that have had become a part of your life your growth and development. You've had to cope with reduced school hours and some of you with inadequate supplies to learn effectively under the existing conditions. You've even been fearful that you might lose loved ones or friends. You might even have already lost loved ones and friends. And this has added to a certain of emotional fear. You're also fearing that due to COVID, you might get sick and you might not be able to do the exam. You might even die. Because of the reduced in-person schooling, you might be fearful that you might fail the exam or that you might not do as well as you had hoped and so therefore not get the expected school of choice. All these have become stress factors and causing fear to become an all too common part of your young lives. God, your loving creator, does not want you to live in fear. And so he has given you in the Bible a sure source of comfort, strength and help to help you to deal with fear. In the Old Testament, in Jeremiah 
chapter 22, verse 9, he tells us some wonderful things he has in store for us. Jeremiah chapter 2, 29, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. These thoughts are talking about God's plans for his people. There are good plans. God wants a good life for his people. If that is so, then why am I experiencing, you ask, why am I experiencing the hurt and the increased levels of fear in my life? Let's look again to God's word for the answer to that question. In Isaiah 41 verses 9b to 13 gives us the answer. Isaiah 41 9b Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shall not find them, even them that contend with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Verse 39b tells us who can claim those comforting words of God. It says, Thou art my servant. In the Bible, so children are often referred to as servants because they are expected to obey their parents and God, just as servants, slaves, obey their masters. And so therefore God's servant here in this that verse speaks about those who have been obedient to God in coming to him for salvation through the shed blood of his dear son Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross as payment for their sins and to be admitted into his family. When that happens, God goes on in the rest of that passage to tell us some wonderful promises that he will do for those who are his obedient children through salvation through Jesus Christ. He says, I have called you, that is, he has called you to live for him and not for self. He says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. God says that you can count upon him to be always there helping you because God wants for you to succeed. You see the thoughts of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 speaks about God's good plans for his children and how those plans will become they will experience those plans in their lives. If they obey God, God will bless them. He will come alongside of you and he will enable you to live, give you the power to live in the manner he wants you to live as his obedient child. And when you do that, God says that you can count upon him to be there and when fearful situations 
arise in your life, he will, you will hear him say through his word that you have hid in your heart, fear not, I will help you. God desires that you will allow him to help you to overcome all the different sorts of fears that you will experience in life, not just SEA exams, but your whole life, so that you will have good success and you will have true happiness. My prayer for you is, dear God, I bring all of these SEA students before you. You know what they're going through. You know their anxieties and their fears. I pray that you will calm them and that you will be, help them to concentrate on what is important in their lives at this moment, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for their parents, their teachers, and the study coaches who are preparing them to be able to have good success in the SEA exams. When they, that day help them to put their trust in you, to guide them and help them to remember what they have studied so that they can answer the questions on the exams. Lord, you desire that they will have success. And if you would, and if they would allow you to guide them, you will help them. We pray these things in your dear son's name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Roland, for a great and awesome word today for the children. We will now introduce to you Sister Sunita Bajnat Mudu, who will give you some tips. You know, it's nice to hear some tips from a teacher's point of view. So we pray that you will pay attention and listen and let it help you as you guide you along for your C exams. So Sister Sunita, over to you. Tips are for you to have a peaceful and successful day on March 31st, the day of the exam. To prepare for this day, make sure that you have your stationery, your clothes, your shoes, and your money in place so that you can easily find it on the morning of SEA. Go to bed early and get a good night's sleep. And don't keep waking up every minute to look at the time. For breakfast that morning, eat only what you are accustomed eating. Don't try anything fancy. No doubles, no big cup of tea. You don't want to eat or drink anything that will give you diarrhea because you are already kind of nervous on that morning, which is natural. Avoid too much liquid before the exam and at break time. You don't want to be rushing to the washroom during the exam and then when everybody leaves the exam, you have to remain in your seat and finish the exam after everybody leaves. So cut down on the liquids. Breathe slowly and whisper a prayer every time you breathe. Practice this before the exam so on the day of the exam when you are breathing it will be natural to you. Encourage each other. Encourage your classmates and the children from the other classes. Encourage them. Let them know they're going to have a good day. Everything is going to be okay. Do not entertain any negative talk. From the time somebody starts to speak negatively about the exam, don't entertain it. You change the talk around to something positive. Do not talk too much either before the exam or during the break time. Smile. Do your best and leave the rest to God. Have a great exam. Great tips, Sister Sunita. Now we will have Sister Carrot, who will come and pray for each and every one of you that is writing C exams today. Pray that you will continue to be blessed and be encouraged. Sister Karen. Hi, boys and girls. 
So now we are going to pray. We are going to pray to God to ask him to help you during your essay exam. Let us close our eyes and bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, I come before you today and I pray that you will bless each and every boy and girl here today. That you will help them in their exam. That they will not be fearful, Lord, but they will rely on you for everything. I pray, O Lord Jesus, that you will give them wisdom and guidance. Touch every boy and girl here today, Lord Jesus, and let them know, Lord Jesus, that they will do their best and they will come out successful. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Sister Karen. We would like to give you, you know, a parent point of view of the C exam and, you know, that it's it's important that the parents know, you know, how to conduct themselves and what to do, you know. So we, uh, asked, we have our sister Denise Dalai to give you a word of encouragement today. So over to you, sister Denise. Hi, everyone. Being a parent of a second child that, that will be sitting the SCA exam in a few days' time, I would just like to let you parents know a few things. Now, this is the time to actually remain very calm. I know the exam is in a few days' time and, you know, we as parents tend to get anxious because we want what is best for our kids and nothing is wrong with that. But you know what? We have to remain calm. We have to let these kids see that we are calm so they themselves will be calm. If we panic, they tend to panic. And sometimes, you know, they are fully prepared and seeing that you are panicking, they tend to second guess themselves, you know. They tend to question themselves. And we all know that our children have the ability to do well. We are encouraging parents and we always encourage them. And now this is the time to motivate them. Let them know that they can do everything through Jesus Christ who strengthens them. Let them know that they got this, that they are in control. Pray with them every day, you know, ask God to give them that spirit of boldness and courageousness. And even ask that for ourselves. Remember the Bible says to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all our ways, we should acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. And you know what? I ask you parents to just put it into the Lord because that is what I did. And we got excellent results, you know, and we are hoping for the best for our second child as well. And we are, we are currently doing the same thing. So parents continue to motivate them, pray with them. Whatever you think that they have not learned to the best of their ability, they cannot learn it now. Because what they haven't learned in a couple of years being in school, they will not learn in a few days time. So you know what? Just pray that God give them that wisdom, that knowledge and that understanding to write the exam. Let them know that when they go to write the exam, on the day of the exam, just say a silent prayer in their mind, you know, and ask God to lead them and guide them and ask God to be with them. Right? God bless you. Sister Denise, that was encouraging to know. We would now have a song done by one of our good news clubbers. Her name is Janessa Jordan. So, Janessa, over to you. Thanks. Six verses three and four. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you, I will trust in you. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God whose word I praise. In God I trust. When I am Trust you, Lord, I really do. 
Okay, so on behalf of our board, we just want to tell you and thank you, you know, at you know, that we would want, we are there with you. We are praying for you. We have you in our prayer. So be blessed and continue staying strong and let every boy continue, every boy and girl continue to learn your work and do your work and study hard. You know, study to show yourself approved. And we pray that God will continue to bless you as you do so. We would now, now call, um, Brother Terence, who is going to come and pray for all our CXC exam students. We have other children that are writing exams too. So we want to pray and cover you all. So Brother Terence, could you just pray for our CXC exam students? What a beautiful time it is to worship and to praise God and to thank Him for all the wonderful and beautiful children and students who are about to write SCA and CXC and A-level exams and those who are writing midterms and final year. And we are students of all and many ages, but today we're going to focus on the younger ones, you know, those writing SCA and CXC, those that, you know, have so much a demand placed upon them, so many expectations for them to do excellent, you know, so let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that children are a blessing and they are heritage from you. We thank you for these little ones that you refer to as those having pure feet. Because your word says, if any of you humble yourself and have faith as these little ones, you know, then they would enter into the kingdom of God. And Father, we really thank you, Lord, because your word is so important and so real that you know you love these little ones and your word says that even their guardian angel will watch over them and so father in the name of jesus we pray that you would manage the expectations lord of their parents and their peers and their families and teachers those that heap so many pressure upon these little ones lord that some of them struggle to perform lord we pray that you would bring to remembrance the time that they have studied the past papers lord the exams the mock exams lord the lessons and extracurricular activities for sca and cxc and a levels etc lord we pray that they would do excellent lord that they would not bow and bend under pressure Lord, they will not face any adverse or negative effect or side effect, Lord, of these exams. Lord, we speak into their lives that they will know right now that they are successful and they will be successful, boys and girls, men and women of God, because your word says to train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart. So we thank you for the seed that you have sown in their life. We thank you for their faith in you. We thank you for their faith in the word and their belief that you are able to keep them and preserve and watch over them in all and everything that they do. Father, we thank you that they will trust in you with all their hearts, with all their hope and might and do not lean onto their own understanding. Father, you will bring clarity in that exam room you will bring peace upon their lives and whatever the results lord we pray for joy we pray for peace we pray against strife we pray against contention and confusion and depression and lord any sense of disappointment and low self-esteem we rebuke that in the name of jesus and we speak with all power and authority confidence success in their life in the name of jesus any lack, any need in their home, any stumbling block, anything that comes to mitigate them from being themselves and performing, Lord, peacefully and successfully, we speak against it in the name of Jesus. We just speak them to be surrounded by love and by hope and by the prayer and the support of their guardians, their parents, their teachers, their friends and their family. Lord, thank you once again for all those that are about to undertake SCE and CXC and whatever the exams that some are facing right now. And Father, we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. 
So kids, young adults, uh, young adolescents, this is Terence from CEFTT. We are here continuously praying for you all. We'll be praying for you all on the day as you write SCA, CXCA levels, final exams, etc. And know this much, we really believe in spite of no matter what the world says, you would be successful. You are an overcomer. You are a child of the Most High God. And if you don't know Jesus, let me tell you something. Confess with your mouth that you need Him. Believe in your heart that He is the Lord and Savior. And He will come in, have a relationship with you. And I tell you, that's one of the best decisions you can make. So once again, you are successful. You will be blessed. And no matter what exam you write in life, you will be a successful, ambitious young man and young woman. Keep the faith. Be strong. We love you and we are praying for you. Well, as we are wrapping up our program now, we would like to call on Sister Rosemary Brooker, who is going to do our vote of thanks to you. So over to you, Sister Rosemary. Thank you, Sister Ingrid. And you know the word of God says, that in everything, in everything that we ought to give God thanks, and you know, we just want to give our Heavenly Father, we want to say to Jesus, even the Holy Spirit, thank you so much for allowing us to have this session today. Uh, to our special MC, Ms. Um, Sister Ingrid Lutchman, thank you for your hard work and efficiency. You know, you are the CEF coordinator of prayer and you have been working hard behind the scenes assisting with this program. I really want to say thank you to you as well. To our other prayer intercessors, Sister Karen Ramjatan, thank you, you know, on praying on behalf of our SEA students and you know even Brother Terence Ghani for lifting up our CXC students and by extension our those who are doing in higher education and have their exams as well, reminding them that God has promised good success to them. So thank you to Sister Karen and even Brother Brother Terence Ghani there. Pastor Kentish, thank you so much for you know, ministering to our students, you know, God's word and reminding them of God's promises. And you know, one thing, in spite of all the fears that they are experiencing, that God's promise say that he will never leave them nor forsake them. And he's going to come alongside them, especially if they are afraid. And we want to say thank you and especially to let them know that God's word always bring comfort and strength to them during this time of exam. To you, Sister Sunita Mudu, we want to thank you, you know, especially your season standard four or five teacher, and you have all the experience, you know, there. And thank you for your simple tips and sharing with the children, especially from Wednesday night, you know, how to prepare themselves into Thursday morning when they get up and what breakfast to eat, and also to prepare themselves to get to school on time. And even when they have their breaks, how to carry about themselves in a positive way. So we deeply appreciate all the tips that you have shared with our students. To our young Christian youth in action person, you know, we have Rihanna Ramchatan, the daughter of Sister Karen, and she shared the memory verse with us, which is Isaiah 41, 13. And it says, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not. I will help thee. And in such comforting words to know that, you know, God's will say that he will be with you all and he will be your helper. So a verse to you. And this is a budding CEF teacher, I must say. Thank you again, Rihanna. To Sister Denise Dalai, who spoke directly to our parents, reminding them, you know, to be calm and also to continue motivating their children and also to pray for them, reminding them that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. Great words of advice. Thank you, Sister Denise, and God bless. And we also have our eight-year-old clubber, Janessa Jordan, a very timely rendition. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. A lovely song. Thank you to your mom for coaching you and preparing you, and especially Sister Sheena Williams. You know, she is your co club teacher. Thank you once again, and we're so proud of you. Last but not least, I just want to say a big, big thank you to our national leader, Carol Melville Sutherland, for coordinating the entire program and attending to all the technical aspects of the entire 
prayer session. God bless you and we want to thank each and every one of you again for all that you have put in and making this evening a success.